Hello, and welcome to Relevate. I am excited about what God wants to share with us today. I believe that the Lord is releasing people into the face of the earth right now that are a part of the fivefold ministry the apostles, the prophets, the pastors, the teachers, and the evangelists. But their point, the point of their office and their giftings is to equip the saints for the work of ministry. I believe that God is trying to equip us for the work of ministry that lies ahead. And one of the roles that God um, is allowing people that are communicators to play is, is, is in the role of prophecy. And that basically means not that we're in the office of a prophet, but the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14 that we should all desire to prophesy. All prophecy really is in that sense is to be able to see into the future and to speak what God is saying. I'm excited about what God is saying right now, and I want to share it with you. God is saying right now that grace has an expiration date. Now I know on the onset, on the onset that may sound like it's a negative thing, but actually it's a really good thing. Because Revelation 1... Chapter 1, verse 8 says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I am the first and the last. You see, the Lord has a beginning that he wants to do in all of our lives. But for us to have a beginning, there's some things in our lives that have to come to an end. So when I say grace has an expiration date, for many people, they've never heard that before. And they may even think I'm heretical. But I challenge you to look in your Bible and, and really realize that if you, if you understand what the Lord is saying, it is clear and plain in there. In Daniel chapter 4, there's a, there's a statement that Daniel makes to King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. And Daniel um, interprets, he not only interprets the dream, but he also tells King Nebuchadnezzar what that dream is. And basically it's a dream about a big tree. And it, it, it's identifying the, the pride and the arrogance that has come about in King Nebuchadnezzar that God wants to deal with. And so Daniel shares this dream with him. And then in verse 27, it says, chapter 4, verse 27, it says, Therefore, O king, may my advice be pleasing to you. Break away now from your sins by doing righteousness and from your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor in case there may be, may be a prolonging of your prosperity. All this happened to Nebuchadnezzar the king 12 months later. From 12 months prior, Daniel interpreted the dream and said, hey, turn away from your sin, break away from your sin, do righteousness. So what I've this dream that you've had will not happen to you. 12 months later, the Bible says that this dream that that Daniel interpreted for King Nebuchadnezzar, it came to pass. I believe God is saying to people right now. That you have been given a word of instruction, a word of correction, or a word of direction from the Lord. And you have been disobedient to what the Lord has told you to do. And he's got you in a season of grace right now. You haven't seen the fullness of the consequences of disobeying him. Because he is not a father that the minute he speaks in correction or instruction or direction and you don't do it immediately, he does not spank you, scourge you, um, uh, he doesn't get mad at you right away. Not that he ever gets mad at you. But you see, God loves us so much that he gives us a grace period. He gives us time to be able to obey that which he has spoken to us to do. And right now the body of Christ is in a grace period. But that grace period is about to come to an end. Not only in Daniel chapter 4 does it say that, but also the signs of the times in which we live says that. The four blood moons are an indicator that we are in a season of the grace of God coming to an end. This is not a salvation issue. This is a kingdom of God issue. This is an issue where God spoke something to you. You know He told what he told you to do, but you're choosing not to do it. And because you haven't repped the consequences of that decision, you think God's okay with your disobedience. But I want you to know we serve a loving father. We serve a God that is a kingdom God. And he's a, he's a father. And, he, and, he, and the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 that he disciplines those that he loves. Um, let me see if I can pull that up for you right now. In Hebrews chapter 12, he says in starting with verse 4, it says... Um, Actually, it's in verse 5. It says, and Have you forgotten the exhortation which addressed to you as sons? My son, my daughter, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor faint when, he, when you are reproved by him. For those whom the Lord loves, verse 6, he disciplines and he scourges every son that he receives. I was talking to a friend of mine, Leilani, the other day, and she said that she was at a One Thing conference here in Kansas City and that Mike Bickle, um, who is the leader of the International House of Prayer, he got up and said to the church that we are in the reprieve of the Lord right now. 
And I began to share with her this word that the Lord had given me that grace has an expiration date. And she was just amazed that the Lord is saying the same thing in surround sound through various people around the country. Dr. Cindy Jacobs just put out her word of the Lord for 2015. And as she gathered with 30 various prophets on her prophetic team, the one thing she kept saying throughout the prophetic word that she gave was that the prophets have admonitions for the people of God. So the Lord is no longer just speaking words of blessing, words of promise. He will continue to do that because he wants to bless us. He has promises for us that are unbelievable. The wealth of the wicked will be transferred to the righteous. But the reality is that the kingdom of heaven is on earth right now. And it is advancing forcefully and forceful men are taking hold of it. And, and, and anybody that's in the kingdom, they don't want the kingdom just for themselves. They want everyone that they know and that they love to enter into this kingdom. But they understand that the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking, but it's about righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness is obedience. Righteousness is walking in the ways of God. Righteousness is, is being a lover. And the Bible says in John chapter 14 that if you love me, you will do, do what I say. You will obey my commands. We are living in a season where obedience, disobedience is, is actually the grace for disobedience is coming to an end. So those that have obeyed in this season, you are going to you are going to enter into incredible rewards. God is going to reward the obedient. But the disobedient, those in the body of Christ that have been disobedient, this is a warning. The grace is, is about to expire. The grace to disobey is about to expire. So you need to repent. You need to change the way you think. No matter what it costs you, you need to obey that word of instruction, correction, or direction that the Lord gave you, that you have not obeyed up to this point. I don't say this to, to be mean to you or to harm you. I say this because I love you and I want you to reap the benefits of walking in obedience with God. So the Lord began to speak to me about why people don't obey. Because we preach in church and we've heard over and over again that this is the season of rest. We are in a Shemitah year. For you that understand the Hebrew, um, we are in a Shemitah year. We are in the seventh year, a Sabbath year. And Jonathan Kahn, who is a New York Times bestseller, he wrote the book The Harbinger. He wrote a book called The Mystery of the Shemitah. And it's an interesting read, and I would encourage you if you want to further pursue this idea of the Sabbath year which we're in, that you would read that book. It's very, very good. But the reality is we're in a Sabbath year. The number 15 itself means rest. We are in the Hebrew calendar year, 5775. And that means, the number 5 means grace. The number 7 means completion. Everything around us is speaking that grace is coming to an end. Grace is about to be completed. Double 5, double 7 is like saying, verily, verily, grace is about to be completed. Now, that doesn't mean there's not grace for salvation. That doesn't mean there's not empowerment for success. That's not what I'm saying. The grace for your disobedience that you know God spoke to you about is coming to an end. So if grace is coming to an end, what is going to begin? What is going to begin for those that have disobeyed in the season of grace and do not repent during the season of grace and enter into the obedience cycle? They are going to enter into the discipline of the Lord. A friend of mine in Malaysia, her name is Rhonda, she said to me that the Lord spoke to her and said that God is about to discipline his sons and daughters. Discipline is not because you're an illegitimate child. If you keep reading in Hebrews chapter 12, it says that God disciplines those whom he loves. He calls you sons. That's why he disciplines you. He calls you daughters. But those that are not disciplined are illegitimate children. You see, discipline is for the people of God. Judgment is for the wicked or those that have never accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So if God is going to put you into a season of discipline, it's because he loves you. But I want to I want to say today that I believe that part of the reason that people don't obey because obedience leads to rest. So to be in that season of rest, you have to be a person of obedience. But to obey, you've got to be able to trust. But in order to trust, you've got to know the person that you're that's asking you to obey him. You see, I believe that right now more than ever, the Lord is calling us 
to sit down and to enjoy his word. The scrolls are being released upon the body of Christ so that we can revelate. I said in my last post, that, that God has set us down in order to set us up. And in the set down, as Dr. Larry Lee said, it's a set up. And during the set down, he's giving us the ability to revelate. The revelation that people are receiving in the word of God is, is the character of a loving father. The character of a God that is for us and not against us. The character of a God that, that wants us to prosper in every area of our life. He wants our marriages to be right on track. He wants our 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 ministries. He wants our jobs to prosper. He wants our children to walk in obedience and to prosper. Everything about us, our health, <coughs> excuse me, everything about us, he wants to prosper. And now is the season of grace, but it's coming to an end. And I believe it's coming to an end very quickly. We're seeing even in the news media this week that the terrorists, they attacked um, some journalists for some things that they had said against their God. Is it right? Is it wrong? I don't think it's ever right for anybody to die. The Bible says that God does not delight in the death of anyone. But I believe right now, right now in the body of Christ, God is encouraging us to walk in obedience. If you love me, you will do what I command. Our disobedience shows a lack of love. And I believe with all my heart that the only way we are going to win the world is to become lovers. I want to close with a quote from um, from a, a one of the founding fathers of our faith. His name is Sir, um, his name is Soren Kierkegaard, and this is what he said. He said God wanted a lover. He wanted him or her to forget that he was a king, and that she or he was a humble servant. And to let shared love between them cross the gulf. Let me say it again. God wanted a lover. He wanted them to forget that he was a king and that they were servants. And to let shared love cross the gulf between them. We serve a God that is a lover. He tells us all over the word of God that he loves us. But he is not going to force you to love him. Your obedience shows that you love him. Not with words, but with a heart that is wide open. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of lovers. And lovers walk in righteousness because they want to do what he has said. Not because they have to, but because they love him. I encourage you today. To walk in obedience to the word that God spoke to you. Because he's a lover and he rewards those who diligently seek him. Until we meet again, may God bless you.